Hello everybody, this is Noah, and today I'm going to be doing a video on this keyboard actually. It is the ID75 Ortholinear Keyboard Kit, and I actually got mine from Massdrop. I think there are other places that you can get this keyboard from, but I'm not entirely certain you can get like a full kit for it anywhere else but Massdrop. But anyways, that's where I got mine, so that's where I'll leave the link for it down in the description. And then it actually doesn't come with keycaps. It comes with everything you need to get started except them. So I did get a set of keycaps from Amazon. And those are the XDA DSA blank PBT keycaps. And they come in two colors. Uh, the red accented keys and the uh, blue accented keys. And they actually come with a lot more than what's on this keyboard. They come with, um, like this is 75 keys on this keyboard. And um, they come... That, that kit comes with, I think, over a hundred, just because they have, uh, the, I think these are like beige, I'm not sure this is entirely white, but they have these, um, you know, off-white keycaps that are the base, and they have a ton of gray ones, and then they have quite a few red ones also, and so um, you can really, you know, customize it however you want, they're all blank, so you can really lay this out however you like, and I really like that about this keyboard. The three, uh, I believe these are Japanese characters, please don't destroy me in the comments. Uh, these came with the uh, id 75 keyboard off of Massdrop. I'm um, not really sure, you know, why or what they say. So if anybody wants to translate, please leave it down in the comment section or if I have them upside down or something, let me know. But um, yeah, I just thought they looked cool. So I have these as my layer modifier keys and my escape key, just because, um, I don't know, I think it looks nice like that, and as you can see, uh, there is some very nice backlighting on here. And um, if you're not familiar, or too familiar with mechanical keyboards, you can actually program this keyboard with QMK software. If you are familiar with it, you can skip the last part of this video. I'm just gonna be demonstrating how to set up your own QMK profile with this keyboard. Um, but you can set it up basically so all the keys can do whatever you want them to. You can have layer modifiers so you can like hold for example, my layer modifier is this key and this key, and you can hold those and it'll like have, have it so that all the other keys on the keyboard will actually do a different function. And so like my backlighting key group is like over here and like here. Um, so example, for example, if I wanted to do like a solid color, I could do that. And if I wanted to do um, like breathing with a certain color, I could do that. This keyboard also has like a fade uh, backlighting function. It has this rainbow swirl function this uh, static rainbow function and it, as you can see if you press any of these like multiple times it'll like cycle through all of the options that you have for the key some of them it just makes it faster or some of them it moves the layer around um but yeah there's like this christmas layer and then there's this like laser layer and then something similar to that with this layer here and then like you can also toggle toggle like the hue and the saturation and um basically just customizes however you want so that it you know the backlighting is exactly how you want it it doesn't actually come with backlighting on the keys themselves but you can install your own leds and hot sockets if you wanted to so you don't have to solder them to the pcb but that's entirely optional it doesn't come with anything to do the per key backlighting with this kit it just comes with the uh it built in I think it's like eight or so LEDs on the bottom of the PCB, and they kind of just light up this this back or this uh, acrylic plate that's in between the two aluminum uh, uh, pieces to the case. So this is actually all aluminum, aside from the you know acrylic slab here that reflects the backlighting, and you can actually screw it together so it doesn't have that slab if you wanted to you know just go for the straight aluminum look. Uh, so the slab, the acrylic slab is optional. Um, if you just wanted to have like, you know, no, no backlighting, you could definitely just, you know, turn the backlighting off. So then you just have a flat aluminum, uh, case. And you know, that, that aesthetic is very nice looking also, but personally I prefer the, um, the, uh, acrylic plate. Cause I just love the way that the RGB or whatever color you set it to, it looks very nice on this plate. And I, I have some B-roll that will show this off. Um, the the, the uh, cable that comes with this kit is also very nice. It's USB Type-C, so this keyboard is a USB Type-C interface. You can you know reverse the cable either way you want. And it's about, I think, a meter long or, or so. Um, 
the keyboard is actually decently heavy. Um, I mean, I, I kind of wasn't expecting that, but you know, being made of solid aluminum, it does have quite a heft to it. I was a little bit disappointed to, or I, should, I shouldn't say learn, but realize that it doesn't come with a keycap, so I had to buy those separately. So when I got the keyboard finally from Masterup, because if you're not familiar, they take a while to ship things. Um, when I finally got the keyboard, I realized it didn't have keycaps and it said it on the website. I just wasn't reading closely, so I had to order those separately. And I just got this set from Amazon because I liked the way they looked. And this set was like, you know, $25, I think it came out to. But um, yeah, the downside for Masterop is you got to wait for it to become available. And then once you buy it, you have to wait for it to ship. So that's, that kind of is a drag. But, you know, it's all right. I finally got it, assembled it, flashed it with my profile that I wanted and got it up and running. There's surprisingly very little amount of information about this keyboard on the internet. Uh, as a new mechanical keyboard person, I didn't really know what I was doing. And so I had kind of had to research a little bit and figure out what I was doing. So hopefully I hope that this, you know, this video clears some things up for you. If you're confused about anything, you can definitely ask me any questions in the comments if you need help with yours or getting it working. But um, as far as like the build quality of this goes, it is superb. This uh, this keyboard is just it just built like a tank, and it's got these feet on the bottom that you can screw into the back ba base plate so that you can either lay flat without them or like you know be at a I don't know 10 or 15 degree angle with them, and then it's all just Phillips head screws all around, and then you also have these rubber feet that I that they're just like stick on feet so if you don't use uh, the elevated feet you can just have it uh, with the stick on feet so it doesn't move around on your desk and it, it doesn't give very much it wants to stay put wherever you set it and you know the connection feels very solid and the USB-C is definitely welcome on this keyboard makes um, you know progressing towards an all USB-C uh, peripherals and things like that, that that's very desirable to me um, I actually got mine if you haven't already heard with uh, green switches so these are um, Gateron greens and they are very clicky as you can hear. I'll do a click test when, we're on, when I'm done with this. But um, I prefer that. I like that on my Orthlinear keyboard. It helps me kind of identify when I've clicked the switch or not, especially when I don't know what switches are what keys because they're blanks. And because it's kind of an unfamiliar layout, the clicking, the audible and tactile feedback that you get from the greens, I like that so that I kind of ensure in my brain that I'm clicking the right switches. It does take some getting used to. This this keyboard is very um, foreign, or this layout is very foreign to me, and it probably will be for a lot of you. It's just after you know typing on a normal uh, layout keyboard, going to an ortholinear one is it's just strange. It feels strange. You kind of don't know where to put your fingers, and you miss a lot of keys and hit other keys instead of those keys. And so that is um, kind of a downside, but you get used to it after a while, and it becomes easier to type on. Um, it's definitely more of a niche thing though. I don't think that everybody would want, like, there's no reason to learn an ortholinear layout as there's not like really that many keyboards with it, but it is kind of a unique thing. Um, and I personally like the, uh, aesthetic of just all of the keys aligned. So it's a really personal preference, but it doesn't matter too much if you aren't familiar with this layout. Cause I wasn't either when I got this keyboard. Um, it does come with with or without switches. So you can choose the switches you want at checkout and then you can um, outfit those switches, all 75 of them. They are hot swappable. So you can choose whatever switches you want. If you decide you want to change them to different switches later, you just have to buy the switches and you can hot swap them out with a little tool. Um, fortunately, it doesn't come with this tool, but uh, you know, that's not a big deal. They're not really that expensive if you were to buy one on Amazon or per se. But uh, yeah, it's definitely nice that they have the hot swappable PCB so you can change them out for a different uh, key set if you um, wanted a different feel to your keyboard. The uh, main perks of this keyboard, in my opinion, are it's very well built. It is rugged. It's built like a tank. It is very uh, gorgeous looking. This is the silver back plate or a silver case, but it actually comes with, uh, you can get it with a black aluminum. Uh, case you can get it with blue aluminum gray aluminum which is actually a little bit darker than this one purple and I think there is an acrylic one you can get it with but I'm not a hundred percent sure it would just all be acrylic plastic but I'm not a hundred percent sure about that I know for sure about the aluminum colors though um, so yeah it's just very 
aesthetic, uh, aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing, uh, very well built. The cable is very nice. It's well bra It's uh, well made. It's braided, and it's a solid connection uh, metal on both the connector ends. And um, overall, I think I paid like a hundred or so dollars for this because I had like a twenty dollar coupon for drop. And I'd say that it it would be worth it for me for the uh, for this keyboard for something that's reprogrammable something that is uh, very well built and you can customize it however you want with your switches or your keyboard key layouts uh, it's just very customizable to the user and I think that the versatility of this keyboard is very preferable for somebody looking for a mechanical keyboard within that 60% uh, layout range technically it's not really 60% because that would be just kind of to here but it has the um, it has like basically these extra um, 15 keys that you wouldn't find on some other 60% layouts. So you have the possibility for arrow keys and like page up, down, and just a little bit more wiggle room with like what you have all programmed on the first layer. So if you're into that, I would definitely recommend this keyboard. Um, so yeah, check out the description if you want to see the links to go get this yourself and um, enjoy the B-roll. Uh, for this keyboard, I'm going to do a click test and I'm going to show you how to really quickly program your profile with QMK. This is a really quick click test for the Gateron green switches. All right, and now this last portion really briefly is going to show you how to set up a QMK profile on your new keyboard. If you know how to do this, I mean, you can just leave the video, but this is for the people who don't know how to do it because I didn't know how to do it at first, and I think it might be helpful to some people. So basically, everything you need is going to be on Drop's website for this. Um, I'll be including all the links that you need down in the description, though, so you don't need to uh, you know, search for them uh, here. So you can just click on them in the description, make it a little bit easier on you. Um, but here's the drop page. Um, you're going to click on this link here and that's going to pull up this web page right here. And, um, basically you're going to have this like selection of like what kind of keyboard you have for QMK's, uh, firmware builder. And what you're going to want to select is the ID OBO. And that's actually the same layout that the ID 75 has the 75 key ortholinear keyboard. And so um, you basically are just going to program all the keys yourselves. You can uh, just click on which key you want and click on the uh, key again with like another keyboard to set it as a specific key. This is, I believe, the default that it comes with um, when you when you get the keyboard in the mail. Um, and then you can like select which layers you want to modify. Uh, if you want to add some macros uh, and then like some settings, I honestly probably wouldn't touch anything except for the key map and the macros. Um, you don't want to mess with this or the pins or the wiring of the quantum unless you know what you're doing. If you're resoldering or like reprogramming the keyboard, um, then you would use these features. But you know, the average person who gets this keyboard just wants to set it up really quickly, you won't mess with those. You won't really mess with these either unless you want to name your keyboard a specific, um, or your layout a specific name. You really just don't want to mess with anything else, honestly. And then you can just download it as a hex file here. And um, once you have that downloaded, you're also going to need one more thing, and that's the QMK uh, uh, software. So you can go to GitHub and just get the re latest release. Right now, it's the 0.0.17, and um, you just need to download that latest release. It'll be the um, QMK toolbox right here. You could do the zip installation, but honestly, it'll just be faster to do the um, just download the program by itself because it's just open source. And that's gonna once you have it all set up, it'll open a window like this. If you were to newly download the software, you would see a pop-up that says, um, like, download the, uh, all the plugins, and you just want to download all of the plugins for this, um, all of the extra add-ons. It doesn't take that long, and it'll just ensure that if you have any other mechanical keyboards in the future, um, uh, the QMK toolbox will already have all the firmware and um, software needed to run uh, or to flash your keyboards. So basically what you're going to do is uh, open the profile that you made. Mine, for example, is id75.hex. Uh, 
and you're going to open that here for the locate file and that file comes from when we did the QMK uh, layout online and then the microcontroller for this specific keyboard you're just going to use the uh, atmega 32u4 and you're going to plug it in and so I'll show you what that looks like when you plug it in to your computer so you're going to see pretty much nothing indicating the keyboard is present on here until you hit the reset button on the back of the PCB. So the PCB for this keyboard has a reset button on it. It's the only button on the back of the keyboard, so it's impossible to miss. Um, and you're going to want to press that while it's connected via USB to the software. And what that's going to do is it's going to do this to the software. And you're going to see this pop up. This tells you um, that you have the right microcontroller, and this just knows so that the computer is connected to or so the software is connected to your keyboard. And then once you are ready, you can just hit uh, flash and it will flash the profile you made to your keyboard and you'll be all set to go with all your uh, custom key layouts, macros, uh, any of the lighting information if you tuned it yourself. But like I said, you probably won't need to as long as you leave some macros for like the, um, or not macros, but as long as you set some of the keys to the RGB controls, you can control the RGB with your uh, keys on the keyboard. Like for example, mine are set to uh, layer one and so I can just hold one of the layer modifiers and then click on the key that changes the respective backlighting But that's pretty much it. It's uh, pretty very simple. If you have any questions I can definitely try to answer them for you in the comments uh, if you're getting stuck somewhere though So yeah, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye